I, um, I want to stop and say thank you uh, for representing all of us in the Olympics in Brazil. And you did it with grace and style and class. And, and, um, you know, I, I tip my hat to you, ma'am. Absolutely. Thank you. I Absolutely. appreciate that. You know, I, um, I, I, wore, I wore my Olympic cardigan for you. <laughs> well, you're looking really sharp. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. You are, you are you're interesting because um, people think that you go from you know, walking the street to just winning a gold medal. But the reality is in 2012, you, you didn't qualify for the Olympic team. No, I didn't. Tell us about that. Um, actually, 2012, I didn't feel bad about not making the team because that was my first year of having a full, healthy season. Mm. It just was a realization that I can be great. Like, when I was in that final and I was racing with those girls, still in college, I realized, like, I can be good. I need to take this a lot more seriously. So that was that epiphany I had during that time. And that's interesting <laughs> because most people can only ascertain their greatness when they win. Yeah. You had a sense of your greatness when you lost. Yeah. I'm about to throw my shoe at you because <laughs> that's good. Yeah. That is so good. Thank you. No, that's rich. I, and because, because, oh, you just got my, my, the synapse in my brain going. Because <laughs> I, I, I think it's so important that people understand that basic principle that sometimes we only measure victory by victory. Right. But sometimes the victory is how close you come to it. Mm -hmm. And it tells you what you're capable of. Right. So so when when you when you were lose when you lost that whatever was was it a race? Yeah. Because you, you do the hurdles, right? Hundred hurdles, yes. Hundred hurdles. Which is which is interesting. Why the hurdles? Why not why why did you choose that? Because they look super cool. When I was watching my high school teammates <laughs> do it, I was like, this is cool. I want to do this. Really? Yeah. Just that simple. Yep, just that simple. That is so interesting. It it, it sounds so so metaphorically spiritual. Because 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 if I was you and someone said, Doctor Sean, ask me, Doctor Sean, what do you do? Go ahead, ask me, ask me. Doctor Sean, what do you do? I jump over hurdles. That's so cool. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it, it just sounds so it sounds so metaphorically spiritual. Like you know, what I do for a living is I jump over problems. That's right, what I do. Right, right, exactly. I Obstacles. love that. I love. Mm -hmm. Have you always ran, run the hurdles? Um, yeah, I started running track in high school and I, at, at first I really didn't know what I wanted to do mm. and it was just me watching my teammates um, do it and made me want to do it. So yeah, ever since then I became a hurdler. May I ask how old are you? I'm 28. You're 28? Yeah. You do not look 28. <laughs> Boy, black women are amazing. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Thanks. I mean, you, you look like you're still in college. Thanks. But yeah, I'm glad for you, my son. That's fantastic. You know, I, I, I think that um, um, uh, people don't have a sense of what it means to sort of, we see the Olympics once every four years. Yeah. But, but I don't think people have a sense of what it means to be a part of that. Now, I, I, we have a video of you running the hurdles. Okay. Can, can, can we, can we, sh okay, we don't have the video. We just have the pictures. We should have the video. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I wanted to ask you this. Because I think, I think people don't have a sense of what it means to train. Because if you're, when your event is once every, uh, you do the world championship, yeah, of course. Yeah. But when the big event, mm -hmm. and we, you would agree the Olympics are the, is the big event, right? Yeah, yeah. It's once every four years. Yes. To me, that is so instructive. Because most people deal with immediate gratification. Right. I train, I need to perform so I can get validated. Mm -hmm. But your validation is deferred for four years. Yeah. How, how do you deal with that? Um, honestly, I feel like those years that, you know, you prepare for the Olympics, it kind of uh, gets you ready for it. Mm. So, um, honestly, it's like a, it's a mental battle, honestly, to just, yeah. you know, be consistent every year and, you know, try to work for something. And sometimes it's not, you don't make it and not only, only three people can make the team. So it's definitely, um, it's definitely a hard thing to do. So you play it, you, you work for four years mm -hmm. for one race. Yes. That only three people can be a part of. Yes. I thought my job was hard. <laughs> Are you serious? Yes. So, so how do you mentally, spiritually, psychologically maintain the same level of fervor and, and discipline in the meantime? Um, I just continue to make sure that my relationship with God is close every mm. time. And I think that's the most important thing for me, uh, especially when I was the, that year of 2016. Um, I used to do a lot of meditating and journaling, mm. praying that year, just so I can make sure that I'm ready for that season. Because, it def like you said, it's only three people can make the team, and there are so many great hurdlers in America. So you have to be ready at all costs. <laughs> mm. You know, that's that's to me. You know, I I I, I have n clearly never been an athlete 
on your level, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm fascinated with, with accomplished people mm -hmm. because I'm fascinated with how it is they have been able to produce the kind of discipline and the kind of work ethic, right? Mm -hmm. And the kind of passion it takes. Yeah. And, and in your case, more so than a basketball player or a football player or a tennis player, who's, they're playing all the time. Right. They're winning and losing all the time. Mm -hmm. But I'm fascinated with this notion of every four years, mm -hmm. you have to wait. And in the meantime, maintain your discipline, maintain all of that. I'm telling you, I, I couldn't do it. <laughs> it's definitely hard, especially I think the biggest thing I struggle with is my diet mm. and being disciplined with that. You're so, preaching um, to the choir now. Yeah. <laughs> and the praise team. So yeah, it's definitely sometimes when it gets hard, but you got to remember what, what are you doing it for? Yes. Yeah. Don't make me throw my shoe again <laughs> because you, you, you took me right where I wanted to go. Because I think, I think most people, most people have a what? Mm -hmm. Right, they, they, and, and they may even have a how. Mm -hmm. They know what they want to do, and they may know how they want to do it. But they, they don't spend enough time in relationship with the why. Right. So here's my question to you. Why do you do this? Um, I do it to just inspire others. I feel mm. like, um, especially from where I come from, we have a lot of great athletes down in Miami, Florida. And That's where you're from? Yeah, okay. and a lot of people look up to me. So I try to do my best to be uh, the best role model I can. and you know, showcasing my talent and just letting them know that they can do whatever they can if they just put their mind to it and work hard and be disciplined to be able to do it. What part of Miami are you from? Liberty City. Liberty City? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about no Liberty City. <laughs> I know about Li Liberty City is real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Li you come from Liberty City? Yeah. And you want a gold medal from Liberty City? I did. You really should be glad. <laughs> I'm telling you. I mean, li li Liberty City is a tough, I mean, I, I come from Bedford Stuyvesant, Brooklyn, right? Mm -hmm. Which is very similar in a lot of ways. Yeah. And um, it's a tough place to come out of. You have mm -hmm. all of the cliche problems that mm -hmm. go on there. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but, but what's amazing to me, and you represent this in such unique ways, mm -hmm. is that even in places where there's this acute despair, acute poverty, acute suffering, that something is always growing in the dark. Right always growing in the dark yes. and here you are with your bad self <laughs> sitting up in here with a gold medal from Liberty City yeah. you you let me say you damn right you inspiring some people mm -hmm. that's amazing Thank you. so let me ask you this because because I think that I think that most people probably don't know they probably know that you have a gold medal and mm -hmm. that you and that you how many gold medals do you have I have two gold medals really yeah will you stop <laughs> you got two of them yeah and, and, and which two, which two? Uh, World Championship 2013 and uh, 2016 Olympics. Really? Yeah. So, I stand corrected. <laughs> so they know you have two gold medals, mm -hmm. but, but again, I'm going to push you on the why. Can I do that? Yeah, for sure. Uh, because I think, I think, I want people to understand what is the relationship between greatness, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. and the things that sort of work against us being great. So as, as you think about and look back into your life, you're right, just for a second, go back to Liberty City with me. Okay. And, and go back to wherever you lived and however it was, mm -hmm. and tell me where's the why in that house? Where's the why on that block? Hmm. Um, I guess I would say just uh, growing up and just seeing mm -hmm. how my, my upbringing was and we didn't have much and of course, I just wanted a different life. You know, mm. so that's my why. I mm. wanted to see more things and do more things that I've seen my parents not do, mm. or my uh, uncles or grandparents do. So, and track and field was able to give me the opportunity. I've traveled across the world and seen so many different places, and it's taken me places I would never thought I would ever be. Mm. So, that's my why. You know, Brianna, Brianna. Sometimes that's all it takes. Yeah. Just the desire to say, I want a better life. Yep. And, and, and to put that at the forefront of your mind and to decide that I'm the only person that's going to pull this off. Right. No, no, because, because what I hear you saying to all of us is this. Nobody's going to give you a better life. Nope. I need the audience to get this. Mm -hmm. If you want it, you better go get it. Yep. And that's what you did. Mm -hmm. That's what you did. So, 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 so take, me into, take me into what are you thinking right before a race? Uh, I try not to think anything. Really? <laughs> yeah, I'm going over hurdles, so I can't be flustered with thoughts in my mind. So when I'm there, I just have to be confident and just know that I'm ready for that moment and that I'm prepared and I just got to go. 
Really? I didn't expect you to say that. Yeah. So you 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 don't you don't have any. I guess maybe I didn't ask the question well enough. So you don't have, you don't you run the race before you run the race? Are, are you are you just totally blank and just in the moment? Yeah, in the moment. You got to be in the moment because when you start to think too much, you start you do things that you shouldn't. You hit hurdles. You mm. you know you get off balance. You know a lot of things can happen. So in that moment, you're basically trusting your training. Trusting everything in that moment. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> that is so good. It's so good because, because I don't think people really understand how important that is. Mm -hmm. That when you've been training for something your whole life mm -hmm. and you get there, don't overthink it. Nope. Don't mess this up. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> you just trust your training. I am, I'm, I'm fascinated. Now, let me ask you this. Are you, when you run a race, are you competing more against yourself or against the other competitors or against the hurdle? Honestly, I'm running against myself. I'm probably my toughest um, critic. I want to be the best every time I step on a track. So mm. I'm like, I got to do this. I need to run this or something like that. So I think I'm competing against me. OK, OK, Brianna. OK, what's your playlist? Oh, okay. What's your playlist before you, when you get up there? <sighs> don't tell me you don't have a playlist. I do. It's different every year. You know, different songs come out. So I'm gonna get my playlist right now for the season will be um, fabulous new mixtape. Um, it's it might be a little. It's <laughs> what? It's, it's called summertime shootout, but yeah. Okay. I like it. Hey. I gotta get a little gangster when I'm on the track. Ain't nothing wrong with a little gangster. <laughs> this is Fox Soul. We do it all. Yeah. We do it all. So so let me ask you. You come from a very large family. Yeah. And uh, you are one of you are the oldest of how many? Seven. Seven. Mm -hmm. so, Wow. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. How 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 are your parents? How, how are they doing? Uh, they're they're good. They're doing good. Yeah. They're still in Miami. Yes. Liberty City. Mm -hmm. And uh, how old is the youngest of them? My youngest brother is 15. Really? Yeah. Really. You know what's interesting about that? I, I grew up in a in a smaller family. Uh huh. Uh, I'm the middle child, mm -hmm. so I have all the middle child syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> You know what that means, right? Yes, I do. Yeah, I'm always, I have, I, anyway, we'll talk about it after the show. Um, so, so but, but tell me what it's like to be the eldest of seven children. Honestly, I feel like I'm another parent, honestly. Right. <laughs> to be quite honest. Right. Um, yeah, and I, they're looking at me everywhere I go, just, you know, I'm a role model for them. Mm. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much how it is for me. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. Yeah. I, uh, I you know, it's fascinating to me because at the end of the day, um, we play, we wear many hats, don't we? Mm -hmm. We wear many roles, and and it seems like under, underneath what you're saying, what I'm hearing is when you're on the track, is when you when you can just be you mm -hmm. and run for you and do what's good for you, which is p partly why you are, you're so great at it. Mm -hmm. Because you know I've talked to a lot of professional basketball players, and they tell me on the court. Just, I leave all the stuff at home on the court is where I'm, I'm free. Is yeah. that true for you on the track? Yeah, I consider the track to be my sanctuary. Mm, that's your church? Yep. That's where you have church? Yep. Praise and worship. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's fantastic because I think that, you know, we all have to have a sanctuary, don't mm -hmm. we? Like we mm -hmm. all got to have some place mm -hmm. where we can connect to the deeper, truer parts of who we are. Yep. Um, and so, so don't judge me. You ready? I won't judge you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so I, I run on the treadmill, right? Okay. <laughs> it sounds so stupid saying it to you. No, it's not. I run on the treadmill to the Olympic gold medal. <laughs> but I run on the treadmill, right? And so mm -hmm. I try. I've, I've been doing interval training. Oh, that's tough. It is. See, yeah. thank. See. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but but I have a problem with my breathing, mm. and um, so I'm I'm hoping to get free advice from you because my goal is to, is to run longer, Ooh. right? How can I do it? You might be talking to the wrong person. <laughs> I don't run long, but um, I would just say just each time just get better and better. It, that's increase your um, lung capacity. Try mm. not to think about it. Yeah. Is the, that the, does lung capacity play a part in what you do? Not really. No. Really? I hate jogging. Like I don't like to jog Are more than serious? like 15 minutes. Yeah. I'm a sprinter. I like. I want to be fast. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, so when you run, what, what's your what's your greatest physical asset up that's working towards your victory? Uh, my speed and power. Really? Yeah. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. <laughs> I ain't got none of that. <laughs> I ain't got no speed. Definitely don't have no power. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in, in, in sort of how you do what you do because I think that it, it's rare that people get to go inside the mind mm. of an Olympic athlete mm -hmm. to understand, because we just see you perform, right. but we don't know the science and the mechanics of it. So mm -hmm. take me into the science and the mechanics of a hurdler, of, of a hurdler. yeah. Um, uh, technically, just like technique. Whatever, whatever your spirit says. <laughs> okay, well, first of all, um, my coach, we like to do a lot of like hurdle drills to get ready making sure I'm technically sound in the race because you want everything tight and quick mm -hmm. so you can, you know, take away air time, you know, going over the hurdles, but also just, again, training the mind to be ready for that. How do you do that? Um, I pray, meditate, things mm -hmm. like that, and, um, yeah, because, you know, when you step on a track and going over hurdles, you don't, you want to believe that you can do it and you don't mm -hmm. want to, you know, doubt yourself at all. Mm -hmm.